everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio. Today I'm sharing with you my October 2018 Pick a Stick Challenge art journal page. And this challenge comes from the group that's offered by myself and Peg Robinson over on Facebook. It is a one word prompt, randomly picked challenge. And we pick the sticks, then we give you six prompts in which to go in order as they were given. You can put things before, you can put things after, you can put things in the middle, whatever you would like. But you do need to do the prompts and do them in order. There's also a couple wild card prompts. If you don't like one of the prompts, you can replace it. And there's also a couple ch um, uh, colors to go with the challenge. And, and amazingly, amazingly, this month, the randomly picked, completely randomly picked people, <laughs> colors, were chocolate brown and orange. How perfect is that for October? I mean, wow, you know, the fates were with us. So I'm starting my page using a two inch soft rubber brayer to apply brown and orange. This is burnt umber and cadmium light hue in the Liquitex Basics acrylic paint. I end up making this entire page, uh, it's not really mixed media, it's acrylic, I painted the page. But the first prompt was smash. And man, I thought a lot about that one. There were so many options and so many things I could do. And I decided to smash my rubber stamps into the wet acrylic paint to give a leafy pattern texture in the background. So I did that using some um, like skeleton leaf stamps. These are from Stampin' Up! Pretty sure they're discontinued, but there's other leaf stamps out there that you can use that are still on the market. So the second prompt was mask. And strangely, this prompt came up twice this month. And there's, there's, you know, we, it, we have categories. And some of the categories are little and literal, and some of the categories are more um, like an action, like something that you would do. And masking is something that we often do in art, and that is covering up a part of something while putting another medium over the top so that you can retain what is underneath. And to me, that when you say mask, I think, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. But obviously, there are other types of masks, including Halloween masks, and it's October and it's the month of Halloween and it's fall and it's pumpkins and leaves and you know all this fun stuff and so I decided for the first mask prompt that I would draw a mask on a cat and the cat sitting on the pumpkin. <laughs> See where I'm going there pumpkins, cats, Halloween, masks. So I am using a Stabilo All Pencil, which is a highly water reactive pencil, and I'm not using it to highlight or shadow this time. I'm using it because it easily draws over a dark acrylic paint so that I can see my illustration. So I drew my cat, my pumpkin, and my mask, and then so that you could really see that there is indeed a mask there, I went ahead and did. Um, Posca pen illustration lines around it so you can see he's wearing a mask. The cat is wearing a mask. That was that was prompt number two, mask. Prompt number three, and the reason that this whole page became kind of an acrylic painting basically, is it says paint and I already had some acrylic paint colors out that I'd used for the background and I thought I'll just keep using the same Liquitex Basics acrylic paint. This is a uh, kind of a student grade or medium grade acrylic paint, but I use it a lot because I like to use it on my gel plate and it's got plenty enough pigment for me to use it in painting as well. If if I really was going to make an acrylic painting that was going to hang on the wall or I was going to sell it or something like that, I would use a better paint. But um, because the, the better paints, the more expensive paints, have more pigment load in them. Not that they are better or worse, you know what I'm saying, they're not really, the the base of the paint is not better or worse, it's that higher quality paint has a nicer pigment load and it's less translucent, like this um, cadmium light, which I'm using for the orange cadmium, cadmium red light, 
it's very translucent so I'm mixing it in with some of this Naples yellow um, which is a I consider it a neutral it's it's a beautiful color though I use it quite a bit but I use it as a neutral to lift things off and to, you know do stuff like that with it but it's more opaque I think probably because it's mixed with with a titanium in it so I can mix it with the the orange and make it more opaque but even this this burnt umber brown colors is very translucent and that's because of the quality of the paint so you have to think about that when you're buying paint also a lot of people like to use craft paint craft paint is a lot more opaque it absolutely is but the reason that it is is because it has fillers in it which are kind of a chalky um, stuff that they put in there that's inexpensive which makes craft paint really really inexpensive but also it's um, not as it, it doesn't have very much pigment in it so it's it's not going to be something that's going to hold up to time um, it will not hold up to light and things like that you know the light will fade it stuff like that so I don't know you just you have something you have to think about when you're dealing with using acrylic paint but I do like acrylic paint because it dries very quickly and I have no patience I, I tried to learn oil painting once this was a long time ago maybe I'll someday try it again but I cannot stand the fact that the stuff doesn't dry it it makes beautiful blends it's gorgeous and it's you know it's long lasting it will lo live lo much longer than me you know it'll be there forever were I to make an acrylic painting unless somebody destroyed it but yeah can't stand the wait time it's just takes too long and it also is kind of smelly when you use like linseed oils and stuff to clean it or whatever it's smelly so I just I don't enjoy it I prefer acrylic over oil any day of the week so I'm also using my favorite little um, Royal Taclon golden Taclon brushes they're from um, uh, Royal and Lagnickel yeah but what I like about them is that they have an acrylic handle so when I throw it in the bucket to soak it sometimes it stays in there for a really long time uh, and when I do that with wood handle brushes they the paint on the wood the wood swells in the water and then the paint on the wood peels off and then I have ugly brushes so I really enjoy these ones with acrylic handles I will be of course linking everything that I've used on this project today in the description box below with links to Amazon I am an Amazon affiliate so when you use my links I get a few cents and I appreciate that little check each month from Amazon when you guys use my links so if you are planning on purchasing something from Amazon today even if it's not something that I recommended please use my links because then whatever you purchase in your Amazon session will be accredited to me for getting you there <laughs> it's kind of a nice little thing to do when uh, you're making free videos on YouTube for everyone all the time little way of getting some extra materials so I continue to paint my cat I used um, different colors I used the same burnt umber and cadmium red light then I also use the Naples yellow but I threw in some other colors like um, portrait pink for his little ears and nose you know that very delicate pink color that they have inside um, their th those parts of their skin for kitties um, I threw in some green what color was it uh, permanent green deep I think to make a little bit of grass around the bottom just for some contrast in color because I have a lot of browns and oranges here and I probably use a little bit of ivory black maybe and some titanium white or maybe some unbleached titanium um, for lights so now I've got my fine tip Posca pin I would recommend if you're gonna think about getting some Posca pins that you get them in a set because you get a lot of different colors and I do end up using a little bit of the green and the pink from the same set that this one came from in 
this composition. So I linked the set in the description box below that has a lot of the fine tip. That there are extra fine, fine, medium, and then there's even some, you know, some more chunky, fatter Posca pens, which I've never purchased. There is a lot of options there. So I, the fine tip is what I prefer over the extra fine because the extra fine has that that a uh, metal casing around the the felt part of the tip that I don't like. Sometimes it seems like I'm going to scratch something with it. Um, so I prefer this one that's called just called fine. So I went ahead and added illustration lines with my black Posca pen all around the cat. Um, makes it stand out from the background and it's I just I like lines <laughs> I like to draw lines that's just the way I am um, I'm also adding in some into the grass and the little swirly thing off the top of the pumpkin and then I look at the the thing and of course the next step number four is mask again so this time I'm going to mask in the way that I consider masking, which is to cover up a part of something, to put another something over the top, and to preserve what is underneath. There's a lot of ways of doing this. You could just use paper. Um, you could use frisket, which is a, a peel-offable masking fluid. Um, you know, you could use tissue paper, you could use wax paper, you could, I mean, there's all kinds of ideas, but what I decided to use because I have it here is the Arteza self-adhesive vinyl. Uh, so I took a piece that I'd already used um, and cut a circle out of it, put it, I, I put it onto my shirt a few times to get some of the stickiness off so that it would be easier to peel off the acrylic. And then I put it in the sky, kind of over the cat covering up the oranges and yellowies that are underneath there. And then I'm using an artist sponge and some blue acrylic paint to sponge over the top. And then when I remove the mask, I end up with a harvest moon behind the kitty. So the next step was vintage. And there's nothing at all about this page that's vintage, nor did I feel like adding something that was vintage. It just, uh eh. No, so I, I decided to replace it with one of the two wild cards and the one that I picked was dots. And I'm using a ball stylus, which is a very handy tool to use with a lot of different things. But one of the things it does is if you dip it with paint, you can make dots. So I'm decorating my cat's mask using the dots and I'm using um, titanium white acrylic paint. My original idea how I was gonna decorate it was to put some stick on gems on it. Um, I thought that would be really cute to make it more like a masquerade mask. But after I put the dots on, I liked I liked that. It looks great. I didn't need anything else on it, so I didn't add any more anything else to it. I just put the dots on the mask and I think it just looks cute. It's cute. Cute. So the final uh the final step was type, and so I was thinking about that. I thought I could go type something and put it on there, you know, off my computer, or I could type on my, my uh, um, that little tape thing, whatever it's called, label maker, and put something on there. And then I thought, you know, I have stamps that look like typeset and you remember back in the day and I guess this must have been vintage I don't know but I don't actually have any vintage ones but I do have some rubber stamps that look like typesetting and so I decided to do that and before I did that I decided to add some scribbly highlights with my white Posca pen um, on the kitty to make him look a little bit more furry I guess um, and it just just, you know, to give some highlights here and there with the white pin. I like to do that. It's fun. So I do that a lot. <laughs> Add some highlights to his eyes. Then I, I did too much, so I had to go back and fix that up a little bit. Decided to add some of the green back in and um, use a pin for that. And then add some of the black back in because I got too much white in there. So, yeah, cats have weird pupils. They have slit um, up and down rather than rounded pupils. 
so I wanted to make sure that I did it right and yeah that's what I was doing so I went and got my uh, oh I guess I dried it first <laughs> yes did some drying with my heat tool heat tools are always a handy thing to have around if you're enjoying this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Um, I like it when you like it. <laughs> Leave a comment or question below and I will respond to you. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. That always helps my channel, of course. And share this if you think somebody would enjoy it. If you think somebody likes cats and pumpkins, you can pin it on Pinterest or share it on Facebook or any of those type of things and that's always helpful too because that shows that you like my channel enough to tell your friends about it. So my last thing here is the um, prompt type and here's my typesetting looking um, stamp set. I found a really cute one that comes in a wooden box that really looks like typesetting letters on Amazon and the it was only like 10 bucks. So I'll link that in the description box below. But this one happens to be from Stampin' Up. I'm sure it's discontinued. Um, all my stamps are so old at this point that I'm sure they're all just discontinued stamps. But it's called Classic Type, Upper and Lower, I think. <clears throat> so I, I stamped on there, Happy Fall, y'all. And I was pretty much done with my page at this point. Hope you've enjoyed it. I think the kid is cute <laughs> and like it says on the page happy fall y'all that's it for me thanks bye bye